Hello everybody and welcome to Lunch and Z Learn right here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo and today, if you couldn't tell from what's behind me, we're actually inside one of our animal habitats right now. And you know what, instead of me just telling you where we're at, let me go ahead and just turn around the camera and show you where we are. We're inside with our Babarusa and that's Allison. <laughs> now you've all seen Allison before. Allison is our senior keeper here of our hoofstock department which actually makes sense this time because we're talking about a hoofed animal. <laughs> and Allison, I'm going to let you have the honors of introducing who we're hanging out with today. Yeah, absolutely. So we are here with Wilma, who is showing off her adorable nose for all of you right now. <laughs> so Wilma is our Babarusa, one of our Babarusa. Um, she is 11 years old and she is the mother of Penelope, who's our other Babarusa, who's inside right now. Oh my goodness. Well, and all of you who are tuning in, maybe you've seen the Babarusa before. If you're wondering where we are in the zoo, we're right next to our taper habitat, next to our Galapagos tortoises, mm -hmm. and pretty close by our rhinoceros. We get asked all the time, where the Babarusa live? <laughs> it feels like people can't seem to find them. Yep, it's a hidden little boardwalk. You just have to look for the wooden boardwalk. Well, and if it, this isn't enough of a reason with how sweet Wilma is, she actually just went out on habitat right as we were starting our live feature today. And she actually has a bunch of different snacks that she was munching mm -hmm. on. Now, Babarusa, what do they typically eat? Look how cute she is. So, <laughs> I know it's hard to focus with that nose. Uh, so Babarusa are actually omnivores, so they eat a wide variety of stuff. They'll eat roots, plants, uh, leaves, they eat vegetables, fruits, uh, and then they also will eat insects. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay, so then Wilma specifically, does she have a favorite type of food that she likes to snack on here? Oh yeah, so, all, so both pigs, they really like nuts. So if we give them um, shelled nuts like peanuts or walnuts, really? they really like those. Actually, acorn season is really difficult around here because oh, we have a big oak tree and it drops all of its um, acorns and <laughs> we lose their attention for a very long time. Oh, funny because they're just eating all the acorns <laughs> yep. and, and they're full. They don't mind. Yep. Other than that, they really like their grapes and they like oranges, banana, of course, all the sweet things. I was going to say, all the high sugary yep. stuff. I, can be assumed. Yep. But being, of course, a swine species, it sounds like they have a very diverse diet. Mm -hmm. Look at that sweet face, though. I just can't get over it. <laughs> All of you who are jumping on live right now, I know we we really ran right into the thick of it. <laughs> Normally, we do a long introduction. We get all of you ready. But today's Lunch and Learn, I just couldn't wait any longer. She's just too cute. Look at her. And Wilma was ready to go. Look at her. No, I know. She is all ready to go. She knows she's on camera right now. <laughs> okay. No, Allison, I have to kind of notice this because... Mm -hmm. Wilma has some different shades of colors. She's yeah. kind of dark, kind of light. Mm -hmm. She kind of has goobers on her face. <laughs> it's a pig thing. Yep. But tell us a little bit more about their skin because she's really not furry. Because mm -hmm. people, of course, are just getting the visuals mm -hmm. today. Yeah. Not so much all of the, the so rest of the senses. zoom in a little bit here, I don't know if you can see it. So she actually is covered in fur. So you can see these little wiry oh, hairs. she does, yes, Yeah, right. so that's a cool place to see it. But if you kind of look down the side, she's fuzzy. She's got little fuzzes. This whole way fuzzes. That's a word. <laughs> it's a Z learning word today. <laughs> exactly. That's your new word of the new day. New word everyone. of the day, everybody. <laughs> so she does have fur all over her. It's just not like you think of when you think of fur sure. on a dog or a cat. Yep. So she doesn't need a lot though. She's from the forest. And so because she has more skin showing, a lot of this is mud or dirt. And actually we grease them in the winter because they are from more of a humid area. Okay, hold on, wait a yes. second. When you say grease them, <laughs> yes. are we talking like Vaseline? Are we talking body lotion? So we are talking mineral oil. Oh, mineral um, oil. Okay, well that makes sense. I sometimes known. we do actually use a little extra, something like a Vaseline product sure. or actually, funny enough, Gold Bond. Oh, Gold Bond. Um, okay. when they Shout have... out for Gold Bond. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, well, it works for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they do get some dry skin in the winter because sure. they're not in the normal humidity that they would yep. be. So that's well, just and... something we have to keep up on. So that's some of that darkness on Okay, her. well that makes sense. Kind of mm -hmm. way she's kind of a two-tone color, yep. a little ombre almost. <laughs> Which makes sense because, I mean, it's dry season for us, too. Mm -hmm. I know I'm running a humidifier at my house. Mm -hmm. I have to put on more lotion. It's the same thing with our pigs. Yep. But right now, Wilma is exploring around. She realized she skipped over all that romaine lettuce. Mm -hmm. But I did see a couple of quick questions come through. Y'all enjoy Wilma wagging her tail. Let me scroll <laughs> through and find some of those great questions. It's nice to see all of you familiar faces tuning in. Oh, Bibi, you were wondering, are they usually this gentle? Good question. I'll let Allison take it though. Yeah, so that's a really good question. Uh, Wilma is actually our calmest Babarusa. Um, she always has been a really good natured Babarusa, but also we did a lot of socializing with them when they were younger. 
Um, so each pig is gonna have their own personality. We're gonna have some Babarusa that are more interested in their food than us. So we just sure. always have to take that into account. Um, like Penelope, if food's around, we just let her eat. We don't try to do anything with her. Gotcha. But Wilma, she's really <laughs> used to us. We've spent a lot of time with Wilma. Fun fact, Babarusa can climb. You're very good at climbing, <laughs> my gosh. Uh, that Check would help them out. get those berries and those leaves out of um, a tree or a bush in the wild. <laughs> My Look goodness, go. she's causing trouble. Um, okay, Audrey, so yeah. age five, has a more unique question. One that I'm probably not going to be able to show off, though. Does she have a long tongue? Oh, that's a great question. So it's actually not that long, but if she does have a nice little tongue in there, um, I don't know. She probably won't really show it off because I don't have food for her. <laughs> but yeah. It's just tucked it's in there. It see. is pink, though. Yep. So, Audrey, if you do get a view of it, you might be able to see it. And then, <laughs> Susan, I saw your comment about... You having a picture of Wilma with little baby Penelope. Okay, now, Allison, remind us, how old is Penelope gonna be? So Penelope is turning eight this year. Um, in February, actually, I think it's February wow. 27th. Okay, so Susan, that photo is right about eight years old now mm -hmm. when little Penelope, because honestly, pigs, unlike a lot of other animals, they grow pretty quickly. Yep. Penelope didn't stay very tiny for very mm -hmm. long, that's for sure. Yep. Great questions though, everybody. Let me go ahead, keep scrolling through since Wilma's just making sure she didn't leave any. I don't think she left any no, <laughs> lettuce I, though. Oh, I see a little bit in the hay feeder still. Oh, she might be able to, to nab out a little bit yeah, of it. She'll figure it out. Catherine was wondering, how much does she eat? She has a place to herself right now. Her daughter's not in with her mm -hmm. right now. So is this all the diet just for Wilma? Mm -hmm. How many pounds? I mean, give us a rough estimate. Yeah, so that's good. Um, I wish I'd looked up some of the, the poundage of what we feed, but it's really not <sighs> too much. So they do eat hay, which is what you can see in that hay feeder over yep. there. Um, each girl gets about one big head of romaine lettuce a day, and then they each get about an apple and a half a day and about two carrots, decent sized carrots each and then um, probably about one or two good sized sweet potatoes. And then each girl has their own portion of have? grain also. Gotcha. Um, okay. Kind of like a dog food for Babarusa. Sure, yep, yep, yep. Yep. Well, and that really leads in well to Sarah Grace <laughs> and Benjamin. They were wondering, well, she's eating so healthy. How heavy is Wilma? Yeah. I mean, so, she's not a huge animal, but she's yep. also not a petite pig. I'll yep. say. So Sorry, she, Wilma. <laughs> she weighs about, um, 150, 160 pounds. She's in the mid one hundreds. Yeah. Yep. Um, if we had a male, he could be up to about 200 pounds wow. or so. Sure. Um, so the females are definitely a little smaller. And since you did mention a male, mm -hmm. which we have cared for in the past, mm -hmm. we don't currently right now, mm -hmm. the biggest difference, how can you tell males from females in pigs they or have in the, Babarusa? Yep, that's a great question. So in the Babarusa, they have really big tusks. So sure. female Babarusa, they don't really get tusks. Sometimes you'll see little mini ones growing from their bottom jaw, or very rarely you'll see a female that has tiny tusks on the top of her mm. nose. Yep. If she walks back over, I can kind of show you where they would grow out. <laughs> um, but the males, they always grow these very large tusks that grow from the bottom jaw as well as up through their upper jaw. So again, if she walks over here, I can kind of show you where those would come out. Yep. But those tusks are really long and they keep growing and they actually curve up towards their face. That is amazing. Okay, so all of you that are really curious about Babarusa. So they would come up about here. So they're really truly like in the middle of their snout. <laughs> She's like, don't poke my nose. <laughs> She's like, I don't, I don't have any tusks, don't bother me. Yep. But if you're really curious, I recommend doing a Google search. Jump yep. down into the caption for spelling, because Babarusa is an interestingly spelled word. <laughs> but go ahead and Google them. Do an image search, and you can see how really impressive mm -hmm. those tusks are. Faith, I love your question that you just sent in about, do they have predators in the wild? Well, they kind of don't, do they? They really don't. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Uh, people are their biggest predator in the Which wild. Which is so mm -hmm. sad to think of, Allison. I know. So native out in the wild, they're found in Indonesia. They're mm -hmm. found in a few different islands. Mm -hmm. Our Babarusa's Wilma would be found on the Sulawesi Island, which is a larger island. But that's so weird to think that they're considered vulnerable mm -hmm. truly because of human impact. Yep. Deforestation, hunting logging, all those sorts of things have really disrupted Babarusa populations, mm -hmm. even though we're still just getting a little, a little view. Oh, she's <laughs> hiding behind our palm tree right now. There she is. <laughs> but if you want more information on how you can help to protect Babarusa, which seems like a stretch since they're found across the world from us here in South Carolina, I will encourage you to check out our caption today. If you check out our caption, you'll find that one of their biggest threats is actually palm oil farming, which is the leading cause of deforestation on those islands in Indonesia. 
And I encourage you to download the Sustainable Palm Oil Guide. Our friends at Cheyenne Mountain Zoo over in Colorado have done such a fantastic job updating that app, both for Androids and for iPhones as well. So that way you can make responsible choices to help Babarusa, tigers, taper, elephants out in the wild to lessen all of that logging damage. Let me find some more questions though that y'all might have. Oh my gosh. She's helping you find them. Oh, Christine, is that so sweet. They are your favorite animal, you said. We visit every year. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. Well, now you know Wilma on a personal basis. Oh, Catherine was wondering, are they related to warthogs? Distantly? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I would probably have answered that the exact same way. They're both considered swine. They're all part of the swine family, but they really are quite different. Mm -hmm. Both behaviorally where they're found out in the wild. Warthogs are from Africa. Mm -hmm. These pigs are found in Southeast Asia. But yeah. honestly, if you know anything about pigs, you know that pigs really come in all sorts of sizes, shapes, colors, behaviors. Even just here at Riverbanks, we care for, can I say it officially? It's two species, mm -hmm. right? Right. Babarusa and then our domestic pigs over in our farmyard or mm -hmm. potbelly pigs, which are much smaller than Wilma here. She but found that lettuce. I was going to say, she, <laughs> she heard us. She knew. Oh, Piper was curious. How good is their sense of smell? It's very good. Um, it's one of their best senses. So you can see how big her nose is compared to her eyes. Yep. Um, obviously, she has really good ears too. So smell and hearing really are their best features. And part of that, again, is because they're from those forested areas. So just think about it. If you're in a really wooded area, you can't see very far. Mm -hmm. So you really need to be able to hear things coming up or... Um, be able to smell things. Absolutely. Well, and mm -hmm. that's true with a lot of pigs. I mean, that's truly how yep. they find their food. Mm -hmm. Now, Babarusa don't do a lot of rooting around out in the wild or even here at the zoo. I mean, they really don't dig mm -hmm. big wallows and holes. Mm -hmm. But Allison, you were telling me here, I'm going to kind of spin it around. Yeah. They are notoriously good at swimming. They are. Which yep. explains the swimming pool. Yep. <laughs> now, if you have been here to Riverbanks, maybe you have seen our Babarusa take a dip. Mm -hmm but it is a very unique behavior because not a lot of pig species do usually go swimming, to yep. be honest. Yep, and Penelope will go swimming. Uh, we have yet to really see Wilma do it. <laughs> <laughs> could be an age thing, could be a preference thing. <laughs> yep, <laughs> she looks like she's falling asleep. I was gonna say, she is extremely <laughs> relaxed right now. This is about right nap now. time. <laughs> Why well, she had her big feast full of all the lettuce. <laughs> now she's getting a little dreary. But you know what, everybody, I have to say thanks so much for tuning in live today because we were a little worried because it was so rainy earlier and, you know, our Babarusa sometimes don't love the rain, they don't love the muddiness. We were just going to have to kind of adapt plans, but Wilma did such a great job, but she definitely is getting sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Her eyes are barely staying open. So, you know what, Allison, that might be our cue to start wrapping things up. We'll do one last up close view. Look at how sweet she is. Oh, that muddy nose. I love it. <laughs> Thanks for sending in such great questions, everybody. And of course, a big thank you to Allison for joining us live today. And Wilma, oh my gosh, it is nap time. <laughs> Wilma, you are cracking me up. That is so sweet. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us live for a very quick Babarusa feature. I know it has been a long time. We've done over a hundred features now. And sometimes you could say we save the best for last. Not that we're done doing Z learning, but it was long overdue to do a feature on Babarusa. <laughs> Wilma agrees for sure. But soon we will give you an update on what our February schedule looks like. It's crazy to think that January is already coming to a close, but don't worry, that schedule will be sent out so all of you can get it in your calendar. But I will tell you one thing, because I know you're too excited, because I am too. We are going to do an entire feature on the new porcupine baby, the little porky pet. And I'm gonna give you a hint, it's gonna be kind of early in the month. So maybe February 3rd, oh, I can't say it officially though. Just wait for that calendar to come out and then you will get all the exciting updates on Z Learning. Thanks so much everybody for joining us live and we will see you next Wednesday at noon. Thanks. <laughs>